figure, there is a small triangular depression on the back of the knee joint. And this triangular depression is known as the popliteal fossa. The exact location of popliteal fossa is on the lower part of the femur and the upper part of the tibia. Note one thing that fibula is not included. Boundaries of popliteal fossa. Superolaterally, we have the biceps femoris muscle. And superomedially, we have the semitendinosus. But along with it, other muscles too have a contribution in forming the boundary. When we remove the semitendinosus, we find the semimembranosus. And after removing semimembranosus, we have the adductor magnus. Also, on the side of the thigh, we have the gracilis. Hence, all these four muscles form the superomedial boundary of the popliteal fossa. Coming on to the inferior part. Inferiorly, we have the gastrocnemius muscle. As gastrocnemius muscle have two heads, hence, inferolaterally, we will have the lateral head of gastrocnemius and inferomedially, we will have the medial head of gastrocnemius. The roof of the popliteal fossa is formed by superficial fascia. But in superficial fascia, we have some of the veins as well as the cutaneous nerve. The first one that we have is a small saphenous vein. And in cutaneous nerve, we have the sural communicating nerve. In order to understand the sural communicating nerve, we need to go in some of the nerves too. On the popliteal fossa, that is on its superficial surface, we have the lateral sural cutaneous nerve and the medial sural cutaneous nerve. Both of this sural cutaneous nerve are joined with each other with the help of communicating nerve. And that communicating nerve is the peroneal or sural communicating nerve. And then we have the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh. After removing superficial fascia, we have the deep fascia. And this deep fascia is also known as popliteal fascia. Floor of popliteal fossa. It is formed by the popliteal surface of the femur. Then we have the capsule of the knee joint as this fossa lies behind the knee joint. Hence we will have the capsule included on its floor. Then after we have a ligament which lies on the capsule and that is the oblique popliteal ligament. And finally we have the popliteus muscle but the popliteus muscle is covered by a fascia and that fascia is known as popliteal fascia. Seeing the contents of the popliteal fossa. As we have the word popliteal, hence some of the contents will include popliteal in it. So, firstly we will have the popliteal artery and its branches. Then we will have the popliteal vein and its tributaries. And third one will be popliteal lymph nodes. Hence, these three contents will be very easy for you to learn. Now, for learning other contents, it will be very easy for you if you use the mnemonic TCPG, where TC stands for take care and PG stands for post graduation. Okay, so starting it, T will be for tibial nerve and its branches, C will be for common peroneal nerve and its branches. P will be for posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and G will be for genicular branch of obturator nerve. One of the clinical use of studying the popliteal fossa and doing its dissection is to feel the pulsation of the popliteal artery. 
by applying a deep pressure in the middle of the popliteal fossa. Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications of every new videos.